Over the past 18 months, the number of wild living rhesus macaques roaming Jaipur city streets has hit an all-time high. Businesses battle harder than ever to protect their livelihoods. While many residents are now torn between defending their homes and worshipping India's most notorious pilfering primates. Although the city's Gauta gang has so far kept their noses clean, time finally catches up with the temple's former trio of terrorites, who now face the biggest challenge of their lives. since the Gulta gang divided in two, forcing half the troop to up sticks and find a new home on the other side of town. Former rebel turned savior, Zamir, has proved to be one of the temple troop's strongest leaders and protectors. Guarding the city's most sought after monkey territory has in the past proved problematic for his Gulta gang predecessors. But for Zamir, Keeping the temple's precious pools languor free requires little effort. Just a simple glance is often enough to send the troops' lanky neighbors packing. But the recent months haven't just been about keeping the peace. Zamir has finally become the father he'd hoped to be. With the temple queen he risked life and limb chasing, Rani. Following the tragic loss of her son, TJ, Rani has since given birth to Bubu, another bouncing baby boy. Like most 10-month-old male mechanics, daily life for this youngster focuses on one thing. Play. Rough and tumble is an essential part of developing a youngster's physical fighting ability, needed for later in life. With a heavyweight fighting father like Zamir, Bubu has a great deal to live up to. Although Rani's youngest daughter Isha constantly gives her new younger brother a wide berth, Bubu can always rely on another elder sister to join in the fun. Despite her bad influence, six years going on six months, the ever more eccentric Benita still doesn't seem to have grown up. Over the years, Queen Rani has witnessed many partners come and go. Unlike female macaques who remain together throughout their lives, males are eventually forced to leave their birth troops. In later years, those who make it to the top of a group to become king only have around two years before being ousted by another contender for the crown. But judging by his past record, it's unlikely Zamir will move aside for anyone soon. On the other side of the city, one trio of boys are suddenly acting their years. Now four years old, former Galta gang members Bipin, Yash and Tito are officially young adults. Although Bipin struggles to accept his boyhood Bronco days are over. With their teenage years behind them, the trio now face the toughest challenge of their lives. Starting families of their own. For any adult male rhesus macaque, 
finding the right female in the right place at the right time is never straightforward. Even less so for rookie Romeos like Bishop, Yash and Tito. As part of the splinter troop that left the temple 18 months ago, the trio have so far led a comfortable life close to Jaipur's hospital fruit market. Just like at their former temple home, pilgrims have also began to make regular offerings of food in honor of Hanuman, the Hindu monkey god. Whether the local market traders are paying their respects or hoping to ensure against potential losses is a question that's still in the balance. Either way, Bipin and his buddies leap at every opportunity to seize a fruity snack. After a belly-bursting breakfast, Splinter Troop leader Devdan, his partner Jaya, and the rest of the grown-ups take time out to relax. While the youngsters in the gang seek out ways to burn off their seemingly endless energy. Unlike Gulta Temple and its playground of sand pits and pools, the city markets require a bit more imagination when it comes to seeking out the latest thrill. But where there's a will, young rhesus macaques always find a way. And it appears a tarp under tension makes the perfect primate trampoline. Most of the grown-ups appear fixated by the show. One trio of males seem to be distracted by a certain sector of the audience. Bipin, Yash and Tito gaze in the direction of the gang's females, hoping to catch a glimpse of a wandering eye. But it seems they're not the only ones on the lookout. As the trio show increased interest in the splinter troop girls, alpha male Devdan clocks their every move. At Animal Charity, Help in Suffering, one person has been keeping an eye on monkeys across the entire city. Specialist animal carer Suresh Valmiki continues to nurse the sick and injured back to health, as well as provide a temporary home for abandoned and lost youngsters. Soon, this newly formed mini troop will be strong enough to be released back into the wild. Until then, they face the harsh life of full bed and board, including some of the best chapatis the region can offer. Hand-fed and cooked to order, there are never any complaints at this particular restaurant. Since surviving the recent economic slump, helping suffering have just managed to keep their head above water. But last summer, temperatures in Jaipur rose just shy of an all-time record of 47 degrees and claimed many human and animal lives. If the year-on-year -year mercury levels across India continue to rise, the charity could be pushed to breaking point as monkeys suffering dehydration and heat stroke reach another record high. In the city centre, 
one particular person is already feeling the heat. Dana La, the city's monkey catcher, has had a relatively peaceful past few months. Until now, that is. As Jaipur's population continues to soar and fast approaches four million people, the number of monkey gangs roaming the streets has also increased. General pilfering is something the city residents have learned to accept. Many Hindus also consider it good fortune to feed the monkeys. So turning a blind eye to light-fingered macaque mischief has its benefits too. But very recently, there have been a number of attacks on properties featuring a new modus operandi. Dana arrives at the scene of a recent house raid. The perpetrators have long since fled. But as Kailash, the head of the house, describes the trail of destruction, it isn't spoiled rice and broken pots that give Dana cause for concern. After being caught in the act, the intruders didn't just flee as is usually the case. One of the gang, Lun, Kailash's daughter. It appears this is just one of several recent incidents involving threats to people by this particular gang. Which troop are responsible remains a mystery to Dana. Over the years, he's made it his job to know virtually every macaque group throughout the city. And the use of violence towards people is very rare. And those monkeys that do cross the line soon find themselves on the side of another boundary, 60 kilometers out of town. Dana has to track down this gang fast before someone is seriously hurt. And as far as the city's monkey catcher is concerned, there is always only one outcome. It's mid-afternoon at the Spinter Troops Market. Alpha male Devdan continues to monitor the gang's new trio of Romeos and does his best to cramp Bipin, Yash and Tito's style whenever they get close to the group's flirting females. It seems wherever they go, Devdan just happens to go too. But as Tito wanders to the corner of the hospital roof, another girl suddenly catches his eye. This particular fruit stall is usually heavily protected, but it appears the owner has left his younger sister in charge. And unlike most of the other traders, she's unarmed. Bippin and Yash join their partner in crime. Launching and leading an ambush would be a surefire way of impressing the troops females. But then, the unthinkable happens. Acting on her mother's call for help, Nea leaves the stall completely unguarded. Cue for Bippin, his buddies, and several of the gang to make their move. The girls pile straight in, making a grab for the grapes. Not only do these green miniature morsels contain energy-boosting fruit sugars, around 90% of their weight is made up of water. 
Macaques can eat around 100 in a single sitting, the perfect thirst quencher on a hot summer's day. Even the Splinter Troop's queen cashes in on Tito's vigilance as Jaya heads straight for the papaya. Also known as pawpaws, these melon-like fruits provide a rich source of fiber and vitamin C. Feeding opportunities as big as these are few and far between. Some younger members of the gang seem easily pleased and settle for petals instead. Soon, the fruit feeding frenzy comes to an end. as one particular stall owner seems a little displeased with his not-so-vigilant sister. While Nea feels disappointed for dropping her guard, three young male rhesus macaques bask in the glory of a rewarding raid. But it appears their actions haven't gone unnoticed by just the females of the troop. Back at Gulta Temple, having to steal for a living is a thing of the past. Jaipur is the capital of India's desert state, Rajasthan. So people here rely on the summer monsoon rains far more than India's temperate regions. Last year's rains not only arrived on time, they also exceeded previous levels, fueling a bumper harvest. And one particular troop reaped the rewards far more than others. Each day, Dozens of pilgrims arrive bearing gifts of food for Rani and Zamir's 50-strong troop. Tuesdays and Saturdays are the official Hanuman feeding days. But recently, the monkey god and his living representatives have been cashing in on their holy status. Seven days a week. Despite the vast menu of edible delights on offer, Benita still makes a beeline for her favorite pilgrim snack. Whether or not sacrificing shoes to the monkey god earns any extra points is anyone's guess. But the number of visitors leaving the temple barefoot appears to be on the increase. Apart from patrolling the temple pools and keeping order among the other grown-ups in the group, Zamir hasn't faced too much conflict over the past year and a half. Family life seems to have mellowed the former warrior. Unlike most adult males, he even makes time for little boo-boo, despite it always focusing on the play-biting or fighting theme. But Zamir appears to have something else on his mind. And he isn't the only one. Isha also seems aware of her mum's recent behaviour. Or lack of it, to be precise. Queen Rani hasn't eaten in the past few days and has been much more lethargic than usual. Approaching 18 years of age, she's no longer in her prime. As for a wild-living rhesus macaque, 15 years is seen as a very good innings. At three, Isha has only just reached the age where she could become a mum. And as Rani's youngest daughter, she's also heir to the throne.
but the thought of maternal responsibility pales into insignificance should the unthinkable happen. And Isha suddenly has to step up as the Galta Gang Queen. Following the success of their recent raid, Bipin, Yash and Tito have hit the jackpot. A few of the troop females hang back from returning to their market base and offer the trio the ultimate macaque reward. Grooming isn't just a way to reinforce bonds between family members. In macaque society, it has several other uses too. As well as helping the receiver relax, it's a direct way of showing interest in a particular member of the opposite sex. The message from these particular girls couldn't be clearer. As the day draws to a close, Bippin and his fellow Romeos decide it's time to return to the market and rejoin the rest of the troop. At night, it's easy to run into all kinds of trouble. Like humans, macaques don't have brilliant nocturnal vision. So roosting together is a safety in numbers approach to a hopefully peaceful night. The girls run ahead while Bippin and the boys swagger in style behind. Suddenly, the sound of a screeching female echoes throughout the market courtyard. As Bippin, Yash and Tito round the corner, it appears their troop are under attack. But this assailant feels justified in his actions. Devdan teaches one of the frolicking females a lesson. Usually, alpha males get most annoyed with the females whenever a couple are caught in the act. But this time, there's another factor the big leader must take into account. It seems Bipin, Yash and Tito have finally reached the point of no return. While the females remain in their birth troop, males are usually forced to leave as soon as they show signs of interest in the opposite sex. A macaque society natural defense against inbreeding. Devdan charges at Tito. Bipin and Yash rush to their friend's defense. But the big alpha male turns on them too. It appears Devdan has decided enough is enough. As Bipin, Yash and Tito are chased away, the message from Devdan is clear. Jaipur has a brand new trio of bachelors roaming its city streets. Whether they like it or not. Next time on Monkey Thieves. Bippin, Yash and Tito scour the streets looking to start a brand new life. But it seems they're not the only fresh faces battling for female attention. And although the trio do their best to avoid the dreaded monkey catcher, a run-in with a rogue troop brings all their plans crashing back down to earth.